art nerds. Today we're taking a look at these Artist Loft alcohol markers. These are actually version two for Artist Loft and these feature a brush tip and a chisel tip. So keep watching. So in the past, Artist Loft has re released alcohol markers that utilize the same base body as the Kuratake Kuracolor markers. You can check out a review of those markers, meaning, well, the art is off, but I also think I have the Kuracolor as well, by clicking this card here for my blog. These markers, however, are different. They are now sold open stock and in sets. I picked up a few open stock colors. They utilize the same body as the style file art alcohol markers and feature a fiber brush nib and a fiber chisel tip. And I purchased these open stock alcohol markers at the Michaels in Metairie, Louisiana, but you should be able to find it in the art supply section of your local Michaels. Just look way down low. So they have a color number, a color name, and something that I noticed about these style file uh, esque markers is that they all seem to be using the same color family. So in my research, I will try to dig up what exactly that color family chart is and share it with you guys at madasu.blogspot.com where I do the full review. So I picked up C5, cool gray five, W6, warm gray six, R3, peony, BG15, teal green, E14 Pearl, B1 Pastel Blue, E18 Coffee, and E16 Light Beige. So let's go ahead and take a bit of a look. I can't quite dig up the style file markers that Kabocha sent me, but I did actually pull out one of the Blick Illustrator markers, which utilize a very similar body type, almost the same. It's just rounded and not triangular. And I have a theory, it's made, I have a theory that these are all made in the same factory in China and then rebranded and shipped out. Can't prove it, but I got a theory. Anyway, we've got E18 Coffee, E18 Coffee, two totally different brands. This is a Blick Illustrator marker. This is the Artist Loft Illustrator marker or alcohol based marker. They even use, other than the Blick, no, not quite. However, I do have a little bit of information here distributed by MSPCI. That gives me something to look into. That's kind of cool. Do a little made in China, made in China. Gonna get to the bottom of this. So this is our fiber nib on the artist loft. This is our fiber nib. Oh, they're looking very similar the fiber nib on the Blick Illustrator. I can't really see any difference in the nibs themselves. We can do a side-by-side -side swatch to see if they're the same color. That would also be very helpful. Hmm. Now, honestly, when it comes to these kind of chisel nibs, they're super common. So that doesn't tell us anything really. However, I think swatching will give us some useful information. At least I hope. So I have here some mixed media paper. I'm gonna do two types of swatches. We're gonna swatch with the brush and then we're gonna swatch with the chisel since Copic recommends you swatch with the chisel when you're using their swatch books. And then right underneath, swatch with the chisel Swatch with the brush. The Blick Illustrator markers have a little bit of a firmer brush. That really looks like the same color. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Top is Artist Loft. Bottom is the Blick Illustrator marker and they are both E18 coffee. For a bit of quick comparison, since I do these comparisons in almost every marker unboxing slash unbox and swatch that we do, we have a selection, a fine selection of markers. We have a Copic Sketch, we have a Copic Chow, we have a Prismacolor Premier, we have a Shinhan Twin Touch brush marker, we have two Artist Loft alcohol markers, we have a Blick Studio marker, and we have a Blick Illustrator marker. 
it's a pretty good lineup of some of the more common alcohol markers. I will go ahead and uncap them for you guys. Now for a quick rundown for you guys, these markers here, plus this one, utilize foam rubber nibs, which are not only flexible and bendy, but have a lot of snap to them. So you can really push them and they'll snap back. And they are very much not prone to fraying. I've never had one actually fray on me. If you work them all the way to like, there's just no liquid in the barrel, they might fray. I, it's really not recommended that you get to that point. These three are refillable, not refillable, not refillable. Now over here, we have our Artist Loft, we have our Blick Illustrator. They both have um, compressed fiber nibs that's very prone to fraying, very prone to getting broken in and mushy. And they have very similar chisel nibs, but honestly, chisel nibs are kind of, as you guys can kind of see, they're all the same. The Blick Studio, and the Artist Loft markers have a color number and then a color name uh, on the cap. There's no name or number on the body of the marker itself. On Prismacolor markers, you get, this is a blender marker, but you get the color family name, like the color family name, so PB121, right? Um, you get those on the cap as well as usually you get a swatch of the color on the cap, a representation of the color on the cap and on the body, plus the color's name on the body with the color family number. With the touch markers, you get a color family number and then a name. And I believe you get it on the body as well. Maybe not. With the Copic Chows, you get the color number, but you don't get it on the caps. The caps are just a representation of the color, so that would be clear colorless blender. But you get the name on the body and the same goes for the Copic sketch, I believe. Yeah, no, you just get the uh, family name and then you get the name and number on the caps. Next, I'm gonna do a little bit of blender compatibility testing. We're gonna go with a nice bright color. I didn't really buy too many nice bright colors. And we're gonna use the brush and I'll zoom way in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And that is BG15 Teal Green. We're gonna first use Copic. And I applied a pretty generous amount and I'm gonna mark where I put it so that we can find it later. And it seems to lighten it and also shift it a little more blue. Now, I actually don't remember if these have a colorless blender, so I will have to get back to you guys when I do the field test and let you know. Okay, then the Shinhan Twin Touch. You do that in the same area. Then finally, the Prisma Color. And you guys can already probably see, starting to fray very little usage. I, that's why I really kind of rail about those compressed fiber tips is they fall apart so quick. And then you're left with a marker that's maybe difficult to do fine details with or it's difficult to do hair details because you can't get the nice flexibility that you would get with other types of marker tips. Okay, so I did not do a super great job getting a spectrum because I'm not looking to acquire more junk. So I kind of only picked the colors I could see myself using. So I'm gonna try to do a blended spectrum. Look at this, we have some weird discoloration. And the paper I'm using is a mixed media paper. It is Canton XL Mixed Media. And um, it's a little bit thirsty and a little bit rough, but not overly rough. I'm also the sort of person who uses alcohol markers on a cellulose base watercolor paper. So, you know, I use all kinds of crazy stuff. And they do actually seem to blend and interact fairly nicely. I noticed that with the Blick Illustrator markers. And if you're interested in seeing a review, as well as a field test for those, you can click this card here, and then in 15 seconds, I'll have the card for the field test. But even just kind of, oh, this one did not have 
the brush properly installed. But even just kind of swatching this, I can tell I really didn't get enough colors. I was trying to be judicious in my color choice. There is good interactivity though. And it would only be a little cheating if I augmented with the Blick Illustrator marker since I'm fairly certain it's basically the same thing in a slightly different body. I'll go ahead and do labeled swatches. Oh, I wanna use the chisel nib. So we're starting with E18 coffee, which is what I had before starting this. B1 pastel blue. And I'm doing two lines straight across, no overlapping so that I can get a good idea of what the color is like, just one layer. C5 cool gray, like my cat. E16 light beige. BG15 teal green. E14 pearl. W6 warm gray. That's what happens when you let Bowie go sit in the sun. And then R3 peony which is one of my favorite flowers. So here are all our swatches nicely labeled. I'm gonna go ahead and line up the caps. The caps are actually fairly accurate, which is, well, and then I say that and then cool gray is actually warmer than it is in reality. And then teal is different. Oh, I spoke too soon. All right, so that's what we got. I will probably end up slivering and picking up some more colors. Not too many, hopefully just three. So I will see you guys soon when I do the field test. I hope you guys will keep watching this channel until then. And I hope you guys have a great day so far. These are very similar to the Blick Illustrator markers. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna double check on the price before I commit to a price. But I remember they were like three to four dollars each. They are not refillable. You can't replace the nibs. Um, I mean, if you have limited access to Copics, like if Michael's is like your main art supply store in your area and you're not allowed to order online, these aren't bad. They're, they wouldn't be my first choice, but I know how expensive Copics can be at places like Michael's. So these could be really great if you just want to pick up like one or two colors to play around with alcohol markers. But given the fact that they have those fiber nibs and I'm just 